Craven, captain coach of St George for the past four seasons, leads his team out of the field. Australia drives deep into French territory. If anybody watched a series of rugby league games, they'd never go back to watching Union or AFL or soccer. Rugby league, the greatest game of all. I was trying to tear Arthur's head off five minutes before <laughs> I embraced him and they took that photograph. That's what uh, Australian Rugby League is all about. The great Wally Lewis summed it up perfectly. Rugby League, the greatest game of all. However, there is an overlooked part of Rugby League history that actually provided the backbone of our game's showpiece, state of origin in its earliest days and spawned the only two players inducted as immortals from the 1980s, Mal Meninga and the King, Wally Lewis. The greatest league the world never knew. This is the story of the Brisbane Rugby League in the 1980s. The Brisbane Rugby League competition had a proud tradition of developing some of the game's greatest players, such as Duncan Hall, immortal Arthur Beetson, and then the great north side to the 60s, followed by Valley's dominance in the early 70s, and a high standard of play that exhilarated Brisbane crowds since the competition's inception in 1909. However, Brisbane clubs were always the poorer cousin to their southern counterpart Sydney clubs largely due to money Sydney clubs derived from poker machine driven leagues clubs that helped lure the best players in Brisbane south of the border year after year. However, two events would occur that would change the axis of rugby league dominance entering the decade of the 1980s. Firstly, Senator Ron McAuliffe would become president of the Queensland Rugby League in 1971 and would help initiate the concept of state of origin replacing the highly biased and unjust interstate series concept. Secondly, fate would enter in the form of a crop of young men who were born all within two years of each other. These young men, Wally Lewis, Mal Meninga, Chris Close, Gene Miles, Colin Scott, Joe Kilroy, Mark Murray, Paul Vorton, Brian Niebling, Wally Fullerton Smith, Dave Brown, Greg Kinescu and Greg Dowling would form the nucleus of the Brisbane Rugby League competition. Queensland's state of origin dominance in the 80s and Australia's number one ranking in International Rugby League. McAuliffe was able to retain the majority of this star-studded crop of footballers in the Brisbane comp by instilling loyalty from Queensland's newfound state of origin dominance and sponsorship and other party contracts. Only Vorton, Close and Dave Brown spent the majority of their careers in Sydney after first developing in the Brisbane competition. I didn't fit in straight away, no, they made me coach pretty quickly and so <laughs> I had a bit of trouble fitting in. I tried to play and coach but I couldn't do that very successfully. I decided rather than drop myself I'd retire <laughs> so I retired halfway through the season. I don't think anybody missed me as a player. There's nothing flashy about South, all right? but there's nothing flashy about us. We, we weren't full of ourselves either, you know, so I remember Mal, like, Mal had the opportunity to play for South so go and play for St George. He finished up coming playing for South because all his mates were coming over here. Everybody felt comfortably. Everyone felt at home. 1979 laid the foundation for the emergence of the BRL in the 80s, with a young Wally Lewis for Valleys and a raw Mal Meninga turning out for Southern Suburbs. The 79 semi final series would put the Rugby League world on notice that the BRL had unearthed two footballers of unparalleled talent. A race for the ball! A cry! With him, though? No, that's right. Strudwig, and back to Lewis, and straight down the middle, Lewis veering away from tackle after tackle, and Wally Lewis is through for the fourth, third try for Valleys, his second. Southern Suburbs halfback, two scrums to West now, Wayne Carr, Sellers in from fullback, he's lost it, picked up by Meninga, can he make it? The big fella sprinting now, chased by McDonald, he'll have to die, but he won't catch him, now a try! Oh, what a try, 3-0. A lot faster than what you think he is, big Mel Meninga. Trying to score the points to win this game. How it goes. Can they score now? A long one. Mal Meninga. Meninga chased by Backer. He shoots Backer. He might score. Oh. There's a lost.
loss of last year's grand final still in your mind? Yeah, that's what I think made the team all that more determined not to lose this one. You know, it's no use coming two years of football and losing two years grand finals, just like Parramatta and Sydney. Can't do it. Okay. No score to either side. McQuarter, Stradwick, Long and Amil, Chris Jones, goes the score! Yes! Great football for the two Valley. Goes the score at the first try. Valley three. Now still. There's Wayne Bennett up on the end tower we've got up there, the Rick Air Tower. And he's uh, got a bird's eye view from there as he likes watching them play from behind the uh, behind his own side. But Brown in our pre-match interviews said that they held no fears for each other or for any other man on the field. And by golly, both of them have played that way, David. Yes, it's been a very strong Next match. Next to go, Wally Lewis to McQuirter. What about that Wally Lewis as a footballer? And here's McQuirter, McQuirter to Lewis. Lewis comes to the defence and he's decided he's got to put the little kick in. He gets past one, there's the little kick. And no, it did come off a south hand. That's by, uh, yeah, by Brian Weir. Weir. Yes. Oh, he's definitely right, I thought it was Lewis's hand when I first saw it. The look, look, at, the story. look at Bob Kellaway trying, trying, trying to get hold of him. And as we said before, it takes a brilliant player like two converted tries in the space of four minutes. In the second half, the 25th and the 29th minute, a field goal from Wally Lewis. An extra point, thinking all the time, has all the skills, as Des Morris said. Lewis with a big grin on his face now. An extra point, Valley's lead by 20 points to nil. Background of Wally Lewis, a beautiful torpedo pass. Just watch how far it goes. There's Lewis. It goes a good 25 metres. Rick Whelan just has to accept it to score the try. Four tries, 24 points to nil. And um, also Peter McQuirter, as I said, in the defensive department. McNeil converts it and makes it six out of six. And the score, 26 points to nil, turning out to be a real thrashing. Grand final will never be the same ever again, Des. As you can see, there's uh, thousands of uh, kiddies running on the field now. And, uh... Well, George, I thought it was really Valley's defence in the... Uh, Early part of the second half that saved the game for them. When South threw everything at them, it was Valley's defence that held. And then after it held, they just hit the accelerator and their attack was much better. Well, I've got the boys here. Wally Lewis, how does it feel, Wally? Oh, it feels really good, George. And as Ross said, 12 months ago, we had tears in our eyes and we got tears in our eyes again, you know. And Nal Meninga, who came in for his first year of uh, punishment during the game. How do you feel, pal? I'm OK, George. Are you? Yeah, no What's worries. What's wrong with the shoulder? Are you serious? No, not too serious, I hope. Give it away now for a while. There next year, George. Thanks, mate. A couple of coaching changes would help shape the 1980 BRL season. Former Rabbitohs and Kangaroo legend Bob McCarthy would be appointed by Souths, replacing Wayne Bennett, who moved to Brothers. At Bishop Park, Northern Suburbs, appointed Graham Lowe, an unknown New Zealand coach at the time. Few would realise that Lowe would go on to influence many international test matches and even state of origins in the next decade. The first game that we had that year was against Valleys and um, it was a big shock to me because I'd coached the top side over in Auckland and we'd been used to winning. And the Norse had run last the year before and we'd lost a lot of players and it was only a new young side but that's when I saw Wally. And uh, from memory I think they beat us by over 30 points. It might have been 35 points or something they beat us by. But Wally Lewis, he was just, like I, I couldn't believe it, just watching him play. Uh, at that stage he was playing lock but he was just a sensational player and he, he just you know he, he was magic back in those times and, and I, I thought he was I, I, I thought he was the very best but years as years went by he showed he was even going to be better along with Lowe Kiwi lock Mark Graham, future Queensland State of Origin players Greg Kinescu and Mark Murray and the flying fullback Joe Kilroy would help transform Norths from cellar dwellers into premiership contenders in 1980. A pivotal moment in Brisbane Rugby League occurred on July 8, 1980 when Queensland defeated New South Wales in the very first State of Origin match. This gave many Queensland Rugby League fans the belief that not only could our local competition be just as good as Sydney, but better. As the 1980 BRL final series began, perennial powerhouses Valleys and Souths met in the major semi-final. One moment showed the emergence of Mal Meninga as he pulled off one of the most powerhouse tackles on another big centre, Valleys Russell Klein. 
South would go on to win the match to go straight through to the grand final. Hello everyone and welcome to Sevens Big League once again. And this event, of course, the preliminary final. The winner goes into the grand final against South next week. And just seeing how they measure up, there's Hendrick away down the side of the scrum. Quickly will be wrapped up though. That's Mills and Strudwick. A bit of a blue going on between Bernard and uh, the two props from both sides still having a bit of a tussle. Meanwhile, the four oh, headbutting and all yep. coming in here now. It's getting worse, yes. Bernardin's having the better of it so far. They're not going to give up. That's Kineskew about to play it now from the play of the ball to Hendrick. Still going up the centre. There's Murray. Murray's out of the tackle. He's going to score underneath the post. Goes Mark Murray, and that's the first try of the match. Away they went for a big try for Northern Suburbs. And what a great start for them in this one. For Valleys, one of the few times they've been up in North Quarter. Let's see if they can make a bit more headway than they did last time. Yes, and they've looked dangerous when they got up in this position on most occasions. Back it goes to Lewis, bustling up the centre. He's coming up to Kilroy. He's away from Kilroy, and he'll score. Lewis is in. And if Valleys ever wanted a bit of brilliance from Wally Lewis, that was the time they wanted it. What will Valleys have in store here? As Summer sends it away to Lewis. There's a little chip kick by Lewis. He's regathered. He's got Strudwick inside. He's still going. Still going as uh, Lewis puts a little grubber kick. He's out after it. He could be the first one there. I reckon he'll win the race. No, knew it does. And it's a try. Beautiful work by Lewis again. We'll get a good look at the head on. Oh, watch the two little short kicks, viewers. You will never see that again. He uh, was there when they wanted him, um, and he provided plenty for them. But gee, once again, it's Norse winning the scrum. Valley well, just can't win. It's a Murray. He's in. Murray's in underneath the post. Underneath the post for Mark Murray. And they trailing now by one point for the kickers dead set in front. And watch this. This is the man, Mark Graham. He had to do something. And uh, standing off the ruck. That's his uh, strong point, and he can unload the ball, as you see him giving it to Murray, and untouched and under the pump. Got about a minute to go at the most. Ball in by Hendrick. Taken out by Strudwick. He'll get the way over there this time to Sislowski. Sislowski, there's a full-time hooter, and it's all over. All over, and Northern Suburbs go into the grand final. They've defeated Valleys by 15 to 14. As Norse completed a Cinderella season to enter the grand final, one question remained. Could they contain Meninga and Astle in the centres and bring home the first premiership to Bishop Park since 1969? Eventually going to be taken back there by Bird. Time to Naylor. Quickly wrapped up over there. Norse getting up pretty quickly. And there's a little bit of a scuffle going on. A belly coming up to Norse. Now two of them into it. Naylor and Hughes in there. And now they're breaking up to three or four different groups. Four, maybe five people going through the air. And they're all over the place. One in all in. Actually, there was a little bit of going in on the on the tackle. Look at this out wide here. The Ninga and... Uh, Oh, it's, that's as bad as I've seen in the grand final. And Not still good. It's, still it's going on in plenty of other areas. What do you do in a situation like this, Ross? Well, I don't think you get involved the way these players are out there now. Somebody's going to get hurt. There's probably a key player that does get hurt. And I think it's very silly of the team captains let the players carry on the way they are at this stage. He's underneath. And they'll put him to the ground about 30. And he's coming up now against Nader on that occasion. Belly to Northern Suburbs. Here's Warnock back onto his mark, kicking for goal, pretty strong wind at that end of the ground, that'll give you an idea of the kick, he's coming in, it's on its way, let's have a look at it, it is there! First points on the board in the 1980 Brisbane Rugby League Grand Final, and North lead the Southern Suburbs by two points to nil. There you see the big charge through uh, by Morocco, and eventually goes to the ground, we'll have to put it up. He's not feeling too well at all. That's Graham out behind the Kilroy. Here's a go, Kilroy through the gap. He's up over the quarter line. He's got Glenn in front of him. He bumps away. Glenn still going, but eventually put down. A nice run by the fullback. This is Henrik again. 
to Bird, the winger coming in. Oh, he's been away from the centre, he got away from Lumpy, he's coming up to Glenn, he's looking for his support. He could find Warnock, his winger, Warnock comes back inside, tackle over there by Astell and Lumpy a couple of metres from the line. Of course, I think have got to uh, play that they keep the ball uh, for at least 60% of the rest of the game. Warnock successful with that shot at goal, and so now North move back into the lead. They lead by four points to two. Play to the supports, that's Murray. Henrik got it away this time to Draper coming through back to Henrik a little fella moving around dodging weaving found Graham then away to Walker Walker got it back to Murray Murray got it away to Kilroy this is nice stuff Kilroy claps on the pace he puts it away as to the positive balance so a good run by the fullback Birds up as the dummy half back over to Murray on it goes to Van Arden. they've got him running at sixes and eights at the moment to Henrik he gets it away to Walker bounces across over there to Draper Draper turns it back on to Dunn the big fella still going he's over the quarter line Northern Suburbs, they've swept to a lead of seven points to two. A try before half-time, Johnston, Sully, Lumbey, oh, this has got to be it, Meninga, quick hands and they'll do it, Maui Dummies goes himself, out of a couple, still going, Meninga, he'll score! The strength of Malcolm Meninga has won through, and Southern Suburbs get within two points of North as he goes in for the try, North lead by seven to five. Now watch Meninga, this is sheer power and uh, you can nearly hear the checkbooks being pulled out by those southerners as they watch this guy go. Lumbee's there again, getting in the road a bit now. Meninga, his support was crowded, so he decided, I'll have a go on that. Now look at this, that is just sheer power. He's bumping guys off. Dave Browse, I really think, and uh, there's so much room there that uh, nobody up there is going to look at the fullback. Here's a kick, it's all that way. It's all right there, it's there. That's the equaliser for Meninga. South is seven, and North is seven. And it's almost gone half-time. Back over to Meninga. He's going to put the boot underneath him. Well, if Joe Kilroy likes the boot to come down at him, well, he's away if he wants to have a bit of a run. Here's the chance. Back into his end. Same goal onto his own quarter, rather. Now turns around. Starts to go up the centre. Run. He's doing it. He's up over the half-way mark. He's still going. He's coming up the cliff. Gets it away over there. This time he's going to go. He's going to go. He's going to go. He's going to go. Nice piece of work. Joe Kilroy. I felt he should have been the one that was pinged. Now he takes a tap, picked up by Morocco, over to Lumby, got it away to Johnston, there's the gap, he stepped back inside, he's over beside the post. Billy Johnston beside the post. Fully, you won't miss this one. Well, you nominated a try, it'll make it a cliffhanger, well, you've got just that. 
certainly is, 17 to 15. Gat Southern Suburbs come back strongly with some seven minutes to go. Lining up to come on for Northern Suburbs. Back it comes this time to Sully, then away to Keeley. He's put a bit of dash in on since he's been there. A big one over the top, it'll be taken by Glenn. Got away to Graham. with a bit of room to move. He's up the touchline. He decides to go himself. He's still going. Mick Graham looking for support. Can he get it back? No, he can't. He's in the touch. Take the tap. Now he puts a little kick. That's adventurous. Follows out after it. Takes it. That was adventurous. He's going to kick it upfield. Oh, he's kicked it out on the foot. I wanted to play 100 games and that was it for me. Something about the place got into my blood and I just stayed. The Queensland side and the state of origin side looked great, great to have, but captaining South uh, was just really, was probably up there as being my best moment. And leading them out will be Bruce Haskell, their skipper. Yes, Bruce Haskell, captain of the Magpies. Through the 81 BRL season, Southern Suburbs and Redcliffe appeared to be on a collision course, particularly with the return of Arthur Beetson to Redcliffe. The 1981 State of Origin match would prove to be another step in the ascension of Queensland and Brisbane Rugby League. Wally Lewis would make his debut as skipper, and Queensland would win after trailing 15-0 early. about three metres out, and I think it's a try. In 1981, up against Redcliffe, I was off the bench. The feeling around that game was as much hope as it was desperation. They just absolutely needed it. It's a nostalgic return for Big Artie. 16 years since he last won a premiership for Redcliffe here at Lang Park. But for Souths, it's even longer. 28 years since Mick Crocker's Magpies last took out a premiership for Souths. And Bunny Pierce is given the honour of leading out the Redcliffe side, and why not? The 34-year-old veteran will be playing his last game today. It's his 150th A-grade game for Redcliffe. Probably close to 30,000 people. It's very hot, but nevertheless, they're enjoying the sunshine. The atmosphere is electric at the moment. And leading them out will be Bruce Haskell, their skipper, I'd say. Yes, Bruce Haskell, captain of the Magpies, possibly playing his last grand final today, too. He's uh, hinted that this may be his last season. Harry in, Harry scored the try. So Souths have scored the first try of the game. With Sully it was, not Bruce Harry. Taking the initiative again, catching with them unawares. Here's Meninga with a fairly simple kick. It's just a matter of accuracy. He's got it. 5-2. Billy Johnston appeared to be packing with a loose arm there, but Redcliffe has got it. Fine. Striding through a gap, Benson. Great run by the veteran. He's still got an overlap if they use it properly. A toy. Cherry. Stepping one. Stepping another. He'll score. No, he stopped short. It'll be double different. That'll be that from head on. Lovely at the Mija. Johnston. He's looking for Meninga. He's got it to him. A big ball comes to Benson out of the way. Didn't he hit Benson then? Concussed for quite a while, and uh, it was came about from this charge from Meninga. The inside pass here, a nice neat one, and Meninga crashes his hip, runs one wide. There's Meninga taking the ball now, and he takes on Abbott coming in low there. There's the arm to knock him away, and then crashes into beats. And see you later, Big Artie. There's Malcolm Meninga's here, and that's the sort of inspiring stuff they're going to need from Meninga today. The Sully's kick, you can see Lumby indicating it's going to go up. It'll be a bomb. Instead it goes to Harry, it's a field goal attempt, it's charged forward. Another shot at field goal, this time by Spencer, and it's hooked across. Yes, it's there! What a kick! Well, have a look at that one from Endon, that was an amazing one. Two field goal attempts, the first one charged down, and have you ever seen that before, Dave? Never before, Peter, that could be uh, the omen for South Day, because here it is, right back to Harry. Can only do one thing, and that's have a shot for field goal, because he's that far back. Jones does well to charge it down, and of all people, it lands right in the arms of Ken Spencer, around about 30 metres out to the right-hand side. 
great set move this from South, and then uh, Spencer just lines it up, and as cool as you like, Bang will have another go, and uh, gets a one-pointer out with only uh, seconds to go before half-time. In fact, the ball hits the post, as you can see, and goes in. So a one-pointer, it gives South the lead of 6-2. It's anyone's game still, Dave, but I still feel this heat might affect Redcliffe more than South. I think it has, Peter, already. South uh, looking the uh, best side by far. They're finding gaps, they're backing up well, and of course, their defence, I think that's what's really put them in such a good position. It's been impregnable. Everything Redcliffe has flown, thrown at them has been uh, just to no avail. They've had a challenge, and they've had their backs to the wall a couple of times. They've had players off. And here's an interesting penalty, right? This is well within uh, Bunny Pierce's range, and uh, would surprise me if Pierce doesn't take the two points here, and it would be a good start in the second half for Redcliffe. Bunny Pierce once again, so far he's kicked two out of, one out of two, and here's his third attempt, it's over. Griffiths, charging tackle by Darrell Hicks again, my right, geez, tackled well in this game. Last tackle, the bomb again, more pressure for Spencer. Back to Harry for a shot at field goal. It's low, and it's missed. And then a field goal is always at last resort. Two minutes left. Redcliffe lead by one point, 9-8. It's gone to Sully. Sully trying to set himself for a kick. He's made the half break. Five tackles gone. One minute left. They're running it. Phelan. Meninga. Redcliffe, 13 points tonight. It was pretty exciting, obviously. I grabbed Mick and sort of threw him around like a rag doll, basically. Um, probably the best tackle I did all day, too. But it was all worth it. He didn't care. It was a great day for us. It was an emotional day. We partied for about two or three days afterwards. He knew there was the Redcliffe in the corner. That's the winning try. That's a grand final try. And really, South, I think, had deserved uh, to win this match. We had a lot more interest back in the game in those days, which made life a lot easier for those guys too, because they had a lot of supporters. In those times, it was great to celebrate with the fans. We won a grand final, and when we did win a grand final, there's 10,000 people here, you know, all on the field, there's marquees everywhere, and everyone's drinking and having a good time. With Queensland's Rugby League popularity rising, the QRL would invest in a new competition, the Winfield State League, that would include six regional-based teams competing against the Brisbane teams. This competition would take place in the early stages of each season over the next decade. Johnny Lang, Eastern Suburbs coach. Holden, Paul Khan. Good pass to Calhoun. And away goes the young Final 
by 23 points to 15. For the third year in a row, Queensland, with the majority of their players being based in Brisbane, would defeat New South Wales in the first ever three-match State of Origin series. Queensland would further showcase their rise as a rugby league superpower with a victory over the touring New Zealand side in convincing fashion. There's the pass, challenge the score in the opening minute. What a great start for... Standing like Wally was standing then, but he's going places now. Lewis up over halfway. Long pass to Chalice. He's going for the corner. Pass back in to Morris. Great run by Lewis. Lewis will score. Wally Lewis over. So Wally Lewis scores his third try. So that's a wise decision by the Queensland management to bring Rowan Hancock off the field. There's Curry. Curry's through. He's got a ton of pace. Tony Curry for the corner. Yes! A try to Queensland. And Tony Curry, a well deserved try. Following the victory over the Blues, Queensland would gain a number of selections in the Australian Test side. Mal Meninga would make his test debut and Wally Lewis would be named as vice-captain for the Kangaroos. Doors, Miles, look at this fella break the line, he's done it again, he's got support on his right, he takes it on on his own, and Gene Miles is going to score, they won't catch him, he's over for a great try. Well, Gene Miles, to our minds, was the man of the match and uh, his try was the best try of the match, although there were some rippers as you just saw. Gene Miles, to my mind, could go on the kangaroo tour. He's big, he's strong, he's got good hands, he's got a step. He's very much the same sort of player as Mal Meninga and that might count against him when the kangaroo selectors get around to picking the squad to go to England and France. However, he's the winner of our Winfield Try Award today. Next week, of course, we've got Valleys and South in the major semi-final. That match will be even better than today's. Let's hope the crowd is as good as it was today. Winner Manly, well, I think they could even beat the loser of that game and go on to their first ever grand final. Winner Manly would enjoy a breakthrough season in 1982. With the rise of Gene Miles and Colin Scott and the signing of Test Prop Des Morris, the Seagulls ran through Redcliffe and Valleys on their way to their first ever grand final appearance against Souths. Welcome to Lang Park, and this is the big one, the grand final between Souths and Winner Manly. That's an aerial shot, you can see what it's like from upstairs, but down here on the ground, the atmosphere is electric. It's the build-up for this tremendous match, and a huge crowd at Lang Park, and lots of red and green outs. Billy Johnston, the little motor mechanic from Cunnamulla, a proud moment for him as he leads out the mighty magpies. Right the rest, the 32-year-old prop forward, who's a laid-out present for the Australian kangaroo side, leads out Winner Manly, the sentimental favourite for today's grand final. Southern suburbs, Bruce Harry is going to kick the touch. Can he find it? No, Warren Green's back there. Well done. Winner Manly winger runs it up. The Chalice is there. Got it back to Walsh, however. Walsh across to Colin Scott. Colin Scott running backwards now as Belch is out after him. He got away from Belch. Oh, yeah, now here's the gap coming up. Over there to Bruce Harry. Oh, now yes. there's a gap coming through nicely as Belcher away to Meninga. There's nothing wrong with him now as he gets over the borderline back inside. This time to Chalice. Chalice over the top to Sully. Sully going to be pulled out eight metres out. Good football. Great football. Ash Lumping will be the dummy half to Sully. Harry. Can South do something here? Over the top taken by Meninga. Meninga through the gap. He's up over the quarter way. He's pushing it away. Left, right, and centre. Ball rolling loose. Going to be taken by Green, but a penalty South. Offside. Coming up as dummy half to Brad Sully. Sully through oh, the gap. Yes. He's away. Still going. Lumbee. Lumbee. Lumbee going for the line. Just reaches the out. Nice. Try. Try. Yes. Up to the quarter line. Final tackle coming up. Belcher. Belcher. Belcher still going. He's only got Scott to beat. No one around. And final tackle. 7-3 to three the score. Winham leading. Just under nine minutes remaining. Gene Miles. Waltz. Oh, yeah. That's it. Prince is in and it's over. Oh, there it is. There it is. The green and red horde. 
on the outer at Lang Fowl. What a day for Winner Manley. Have a look at him, will you? And uh, I've got a red shirt on anyway. <laughs> I better find a green hat or something. Bullock is the dummy half. Bullock will send it across to Rod Morris. Morris almost through. Back to the oh, ball. Shot away. Yes. Half back is in. Underneath the post. Oh. Rodney Morris. And there's Dez. Dez is pretty happy now. He's pretty happy now. And uh, three tries. That's tied it right up. DJ is fapping himself, getting congratulated from everybody. And uh, obviously talking to 4BC at the moment. But look at Rod Morris. Five. And it's all over. Winner Manley of the 1982 Grand Final winners have defeated South by 17 points to three. For the storied 1982 Kangaroo Tour, Queensland would garner only 11 of the possible 28 selections, having despite one, the previous three years of State of Origin matches and the first three match series in 82. One could not argue with the results of the 82 Kangaroo Tour going undefeated throughout the tour. However, Queensland would take out their feeling of lack of respect on the Blues over the next two State of Origin series. The 1983 season would see perennial strugglers Western Suburbs notch up a Woolies pre-season competition victory, led by their outstanding utility back Tony Curry. 1983 would also see the emergence of a Brisbane Rugby League cult figure, Jamie Sandy, making his debut for the Mighty Panthers. scoring 264 points in the competition, 48 against, Valley's 230 and 72 against. A good crowd for this match this afternoon, two good teams that have performed very, very competently during the Winfield State League. They've met once so far this season, that was in the Woolies pre-season, it was a win to East by 20 points to 16, we'll find out the story this year in just a moment. Wally Lewis leading Fortitude Valley out, you'll notice once again, Mike, uh, that he has that very heavily strapped uh, left knee again, the one that's been giving a bit of trouble. And, uh, now to Ray Kelly to back up. Well held up by the defence, so we have to go back inside. There's the half-time hooter, Lindenberg, to Cook. Cook up over the quarter line. Boom. The big fullback comes on the pace. He's got some too. Back inside. Suburbs and try desperately. <laughs> Lewis from dummy half, diving for the line, he's in. Lolly Lewis over. It's eight all at Lang Park. That was an individual effort to Lewis. He really went for the doctor on that occasion. Valley's looking for the try to seal it up. Wally Lewis, desperation stakes, but away it goes, and there's a try for the rock. Jerry Carrock over in the corner, and Valley's wrapped it up at Lang Park now. Kicked the field goal, but I thought he had a great captain's knock. They haven't performed and produced the goods this afternoon under the first pressure, real pressure, that we've seen. Following his virtuoso 1983 State League final performance, Wally Lewis would carry that form into the 83 State of Origin series, where Queensland would run out resounding victors. Despite being not two of the glamour sides in the Brisbane competition at the time, Redcliffe and East were undoubtedly the most consistent okay, and met in the 83 okay, grand final. Referee Eddie Ward blows the whistle. They're underway in the 83 Brisbane Rugby League grand final. From the kickoff, Colin Part feeds it away and uh, coming up there will be the winger in John Chapman. The tap inside the quarter. No tries on the borders yet at Lang Park. Both teams defending quite desperately. Lindenberg running across field. Now he gets it away to Gavin Jones. Here's the big second row on the bustle. He's going for that corner, but oh, he's in a touch. That's the team that will win the 1983 grand final. So this is Wayne Lindenberg. Lindenberg still going. He's got it back inside to Tengdall. Tengdall up over the halfway. Has he got the pace? Tengdall stretching out. Chapman making a bit of headway. No, he's in. Tengdall will run around and score underneath the post. And Eastern Suburbs 
in for the first try, and that could be the signal of the whole thing. He's over for the try, they have a lead of 6 to nil. So over to Wayne Lindenberg. Lindenberg through. No support, has he? He has Backer. Flicker back inside, end up beautifully, and Backer's hands, and this will be a try. Brad Backer away with three Eastern Suburbs players inside, and that will wrap up the 83 Winfield Cup as Brad Backer is over underneath the post. And Eastern Suburbs career away with a big lead now of 12 points to nil. With Queensland's dominance at an all-time high, the QRL funded a UK trip to show off and display Queensland Rugby League might. They would play three tour matches on their tour to Great Britain. The mighty Queensland Rugby League team is on its way to England. The boys left this afternoon following a farewell luncheon at the Hamilton Hotel, attended by the players' wives and girlfriends. Players having no match play over the past few weeks, how does touring captain Wally Lewis assess their task? Well, obviously, uh, the guys aren't going to be used to taking a few bumps after a few weeks' rest, but uh, I'm sure once they get into that first training session over there, they're going to realise it's fair dinkum. And um, once they hit that first game, they're going to they're going to expect to, we're going to expect a hell of a lot over there. And I'm sure that the guys uh, are going to feel the full brunt of the English uh, feelings about getting bel belted in the Test series last year. Brett French, who also had a top game, scored just before half time, and at this stage, the Maroons look set to reach a cricket score. 22-2 was the score at half-time, and Wigan were offering little resistance. But that changed momentarily in the second stanza as the home side fought back. But after 20 minutes, the white flag was hoisted and the Queensland rampage started again. Joe Kilroy dashed across after producing a blinding sidestep. Three more tries followed in quick succession with Lewis and Lindenberg playing prominent roles. Lewis made several clean breaks and Lindy scored twice. Though no man of the match was named, it would be hard to go past the Queensland number six for those honours. Well, at last we saw the brand of football we've come to expect from the Queenslanders, and ironically it was the two men who were overlooked for the first match, Joe Kilroy at fullback and Wayne Lindenberg at 5'8", who had superb matches. One to Mitch Brennan, another to Cole Scott. But Leeds recovered, and despite some brilliant passing by Queensland, it stayed 10-2 until just before half-time, when Scott retrieved a clearing kick, dashed through some weak defence, and set up a passing rush, which saw Dowling go over. Wally Lewis was wholly responsible for the next four-pointer, scoring through a marvellous display of pace off the mark and sheer power. At half-time, it was 22-2, and then the floodgates opened, with the Queenslanders scoring at the rate of just under a point a minute. They ran in three tries in the first 20 minutes of the second stanza and Lewis had a hand in all of them. He scored one himself and set up the brakes for Miles and Fullerton Smith to cross. As Leeds become totally despondent, Queensland produced their best efforts. The second try to Colin Scott after a superb bust by Brian Neveling was one of the match highlights. It was surpassed shortly after when a backline move gave Miles room to move and he threw a great pass to French who streaked down the grandstand touchline for a classic winger's try. It was then 46-2 and the half century was soon to click over. Well, that runaway victory made it 104 points for, only 12 points against on this three-match tour of England. Well, the targeted at the Queensland team during its three-week tour. Virtually every member of the Queensland team was approached and over the next fortnight several will be considering their options. The more immediate concern for some, however, is their immediate playing future back here in Brisbane. Brisbane turned on a bright, warm welcome for the tourists this morning, a relief from the cold they left behind in England. The first up loss to Hull still annoys the team, who went on to play stunning football in their final two matches against Wigan and Leeds, winning both by big margins. For skipper Wally Lewis, it's decision time. With his contract with Valleys expired, he'll be busy talking with several clubs about his playing future. And there are also big English offers from Leeds, Wakefield Trinity and St Helens to consider. There is quite a deal of money in English rugby league at the moment and uh, they're certainly very attractive offers but um, you know we've got to wait and see if we can get clearances from the Australian rugby league and also we've got to work out whether we would mind a break because you know um, a few of the guys had you know, extended seasons last year with the Kangaroo Tour so I wouldn't mind a break actually. By the end of the 1983 season Wally Lewis was unanimously regarded as the best footballer in the world. He would be wooed across to the bay where Winner Manley would sign Lewis and thus beginning one of the greatest individual seasons in rugby league history. Sports journalists, the press box at the Gabba for his announcement. Discussions went through, Redcliffe uh, dropped off yesterday. Valley's had until uh, this afternoon to get back to me. They did get back to me and uh, through the conversation I've decided that the 
uh, I'm going to sign with Winner Manly for next year. Lewis ends his successful six-year stint with Fortitude Valley with regret, but full of praise for his coach and mentor Ross Strudwick and club president Dr Tom Dooley. Blockbusting Wynnum centre Gene Miles was apparently a reason for moving, the two having built a close friendship and playing combination during their representative matches together. Miles staying with Wynnum was a condition of the contract, which is to be yearly. The Seagulls' financial plight did not deter Lewis. Well, Wynnum obviously in financial problems. Uh... The uh, contract itself uh, might surprise a lot of people. Everybody would probably think that uh, to lure me away from Valleys would have to be some outstanding money, but uh, in actual fact it's not very much more at all than I'm getting in Valleys, just about the same money. But, um, you know, I'm uh, sort of looking at my financial future, um, which didn't really make any difference which of the three clubs I went to. Lewis said he received no definite offers from Sydney, although he still plans to play eight weeks of the off-season in England with Wakefield Trinity. The last time these two teams met was in uh, the Woolies pre-season and South won that match by 18 points to 11. A very, very vocal crowd out here tonight, Michael. Yes, yeah, a very good crowd too, considering we're going live to the Peopleville, a marvellous crowd. No points on the board as yet and five and a half minutes remaining in the quarter. Back over to Colin Scott, outside of Miles. Miles got it back inside, he's open for the first try of the match. Dean Miles is in, with a lead by Ford and Ellen. Coach Des Morris, pretty happy. There's the drop shot at goal, and that seals it up because it's over. 17 points to 10. Nil goal by Wally Lewis. And there's Des Morris, quite happy down there in the Winter Manly dugout. A combined Brisbane side picked exclusively from players from the local Brisbane competition would challenge Sydney's supremacy by winning the 1984 National Panasonic Cup. They would defeat three of the Sydney superpowers, including the two grand finalists from 84 in the Sydney comp, Canterbury Bankstown and Parramatta, on their way to the $120,000 winner's check. Off the ruck, he's doing a lot of talking, organising this Brisbane defence. No doubt he's the player who's the linchpin. He's the key to everything for Brisbane in attack. Miles getting the final ball to Kilroy. There's a Brisbane try. Yes! Brisbane. Back to Wally Lewis. Up goes the bomb. It's a high one. It's, it's a very big test for Marty Gurr. He's put it down. It's come from Paulson. Out to Belcher. They must score. Belcher. In the score for Brisbane. Benick. Intercepted by Meninga. That's the ball game. Meninga under the post. Paulson. No gain in ground as it goes from Foster and it ends up with Niebling. Niebling to play it now. Tackler was Peter Tunks in the 11 jumper. Wally Lewis passing and finding Mel Meninga. Oh, brilliant run by Meninga. A great run by Meninga and a super tackle by Young Potter. One of making a brilliant tackle for Meninga. Absolutely rushed Canterbury away. He was uh, able to beat Andrew Farrer, and he beat him easily. And then it was left to young Michael Potter. To a piece of the feet is concerned. In fact, it appeared to come off the legs of the um, Queensland player. No difference at all in the order, but the scrum is to be set, and it's won by Canterbury, and a penalty. Against Wally Lewis for stealing the ball. 18 metres in, 18 metres out, and he's got it, yes he's got it, 2-0 in favour of Canterbury. Was sadly lacking in cohesion, here's Kelly, the pass appeared forward to Johnston, but Billy Johnston must be over, he's given the try, he's given the try to Billy Johnston, and a good cover tackle by the wing three-quarter Kilroy, but Canterbury go ahead. That was a heavy tackle by Wally Lewis. And uh, Wally Lewis is very concerned about Billy Johnston. Lewis made the tackle on Johnston. And he knew straight away that something was wrong because 
Wally didn't move. He just said to the referee, get the uh, get the trainer out. And Billy Johnson is not well. And... He's had a big three or four minutes. Wally Lewis, you'd like to have six of him. I'm just going to say, he's playing power football at the moment, Lewis. Meninkas, the dummy half, thinks about the blind, changes his mind, gives it to Foster, then to Lewis. And this is Bella. Bella with a very strong run. He's three metres out. He's nullified the tackle count too. Six more tackles for Brisbane. Foster to Lewis. Lewis floats a pass out. It's come down to Scott. And Scott has scored for the Brisbane side. A beautiful pass by Wally Lewis. Straight into the waiting arms of Colin Scott. And what pressure there is on this kick now. From the dummy half it came through Foster to Lewis. And then he cut out Gene Miles with a long, long pass. And Colin Scott was running free. Lewis and Brisbane have come up with it again. 20 metres out from the Canterbury line. Lewis switching the point of the attack, finding Foster. Here, yes! Foster, that was a magic ball by the former Penrith player, Henry Foster, and Rebo scores. Now all the pressure is back on Canterbury. Lewis read it again, switched the play back to the blind side, Foster made the break, they, they, Canterbury uh, was short in defence, Brisbane had the overlap and Rebo did the rest. John Rebo, the try scorer, 15 metres in from touch, 20 metres out, he's got it! again on top of the pedestal. Brisbane leading Canterbury by 14 to 11. The Bulldogs and Batista's tackle. He's six metres out from the line. This is the third tackle. It's gone out to Chris Mortimer. He's tackled. 11 out. Centre field. Oh, he took it right to the chin from Miles. It's gone to Lamb. It's out with Greg Malane. Malane is out there. I think it's a tie. The final seconds are being counted down by a very, very excited Brisbane crowd as Wally Lewis fires the final pass. The siren sounds and this third quarter final has been taken out by the home team Brisbane. And so we have Eastern Suburbs, the underdogs no doubt tonight, taking on probably the best rugby league team anywhere in the world, if one can go on the records before us at the moment. They've accounted for New South Wales and the state of origin, and they've also put behind them teams like South Canterbury and Parramatta. Brisbane, as I said, they had a very, uh, very hard road coming down to this cup final, their second ever. They took on South at Lang Park, they beat them 25-18. And who'll ever forget that very controversial clash? Then they took on the Premiership frontrunners, the Canterbury Bulldogs, and they beat them, again in controversial circumstances, but they earned their victory by 14 to 11. But in my mind, their best win was over Parramatta on Sydney soil at Leichhardt by 14 points to 12 over Parramatta. As uh, far as I'm concerned, whichever way you want to look at it, this Brisbane side is certainly a champion one. 120,000 to the winner, 83,000 to the runner-up. Let's have a look now at the combined Brisbane side. Number one and fullback, Colin Scott. On one wing in number two, Joe Kilroy. And then three, the centre is Mel Meninga. Number four, his centre partner, Gene Miles. On the other wing, in five jumper, John Rebo. At six and five eight, their captain, the great Wally Lewis. Number seven is Henry Foster. 
In eight is Bob Binder. The second row combination of nine, Wally Bulletin Smith. And ten, Brian Neebly. In eleven, Richard Paulson. Twelve is Eddie Muller. And thirteen, the other prop forward and Australian rep, Greg Darling. Before the ball's even been played, of course, they'll incur a penalty if they continue to do that. Lewis, Lewis is into a hole. He's found Miles, backing up is Linda. Linda's looking for the line, gets a pass. That could still be a try, I think. Meninga has dropped it over the line. And I'm sure, absolutely positive, that Chris Ward was going to give a try if Meninga had have taken the ball cleanly. Big down in the eastern suburbs, get a pass back to Garland. Garland back to Gale. Gale has made an opening. Gale has gone inside 32. Picks up Horry Hastings. Kevin gets a pass away to Garland. Garland is tackled. But Scott Gale was almost home and running free. And who was backing him up? The best in the business, probably, Kevin Hastings. But those legs don't go as fast these days. This is Glenn Leggett. He's 15 metres out from the Brisbane line on five. Regan puts up the bomb. It's not too bad. Dunn's underneath it. So is Kilroy. And Kilroy does well for Brisbane. It's gone across to Foster, then Lewis, and now Meninga. Meninga stands, gets it to Miles. Miles is into a very big space. There's a chance on for Brisbane, but Gale is around the legs again. Moving into that uh, that first off the ruck roll, where he'll take the first pass, and Foster's moving out the second pass off the ruck. Well, Roy, Wally Lewis is tackled about seven metres out from his line. He wouldn't be very happy with Muller. Muller got in his row, but he's over! That's a try! Scored by Wally Lewis! From Dummy Hart, he made it look all so simple. Let's have a look and see it. Lewis, I'm sure the actual play that they had organised fell apart because Muller got in the road. And then Lewis gets up, he plays the ball, and you can play the ball in any direction. And he did that and he scored. Taking it out as Paulson for Brisbane. Kilroy delivering a beautiful pass to Bob Linda. He got, got rid of Scott Gale with a magnificent bend. It's on to Kilroy. Look at Eden coming across, and Eden has made the tackle. Only just though, let me tell you. Spun back to Foster, away from a forward, away from another forward. Lofted ball by Lewis, picking up Linda, given to Kilroy, and he's in the touch. So well, down to the 22 for the place kick restart. Wally Lewis was very disappointed in Kilroy's effort, effort there. He was shaking his head in the background, and I think he felt that Kilroy could have dived a little earlier and got a bit more gallantly for the line than he did. Very big push by Brisbane, and they've won their second scrum against the feed. And this is Tony Curry, who's pulled down about 28 metres out from the eastern suburbs line. Brisbane with Meninga to Lewis, and then it's gone on to Miles and the big international centre. Eastern suburbs could no longer deny them. With Gene Miles under the uprights, bringing a smile to the face of Bobby McCartney. And that is Steve Hardy. Well, it was a speculator kick by Kevin Hastings, and here we can see that Wally Lewis is human. He, he does drop the ball on occasions. The ball's towed ahead after the error by Terry Regan. But, Ray, I think that Chris Ward's a, uh, awarded Regan the try under the post rather than the second knockdown. Let's look for it here. Reagan Kevin goes for the ball. Ball. Reagan goes for the ball, and I think that he's watered the try on the first one, which was Terry Regan, rather than the second. Well, Terry Regan has now been brought from the field, injured, or should I say exhausted. The kick for goal successful from Eden, and Brisbane lead by one point. 12-11 the score. Darren Finlayson is on for Eastern Suburbs. And now the crowd is really pumped up and cheering for Eastern Suburbs to come back against this champion side from Brisbane. Kevin Miller, Michael Eden, Michael Eden, Kevin Hastings, he has dropped him. It's gone forward. The pass has gone forward. Well, just uh, as well for Kevin Hastings, good. the pass did go forward because he dropped it over the line and, and that saved any problems on Kevin's behalf. Goodness.
I was telling you about young Scott Campbell. Laurie Fryer's head is sunken as the hopes of the East fans across Australia have gone down with him. I was telling you about young Scotty Campbell. They've won a scum against the feed. How much can Brisbane take? Now they've got six more tackles against them. Hastings the player, dummy half Sorensen, out through Hardy. The bell's on gone. Miller. The siren has gone. Miller goes for the line. Garland's got it to Sorensen. There's the siren, it's over. Brisbane have won it. Brisbane have won the cup final. My goodness, and don't they deserve it? They must have withstood something like 24 tackles in the last exchanges of this unbelievably exciting cup final. And so here he is, Captain Wally Lewis. What a great year for him. Australian captaincy. And now National Panasonic Cup victory. He holds the cup aloft. And there's Senator Ron McAuliffe. And what a proud man he must be. What a proud man he would be. I often ask myself the question, who is most responsible for this tremendous dominance currently held north of the border? That man with the cup? or well, the man immediately to his right, Ron McCauley. The 1984 Origin Series was continuing to prove that it was becoming more difficult for the New South Wales Rugby League establishment to continue the narrative that the Sydney competition was far superior to the Brisbane one, when Queensland would win their fifth consecutive year of Origin, with a majority of players from their team coming from the local Brisbane competition. Crowd go mad! Queensland. Canescu, there's the half time Huda Lewis will take a drop shot for goal. It's high. And it's there. Lewis has done it again. Queensland going to the half time with a commanding lead. Queensland leading New South Wales. Scott away, it goes to Miles. He's in the score. How easy it is! Wally Lewis would make his debut as Australian captain, a position he would hold for the rest of the decade. Australia captain by Wally Lewis. Only three of those players not from Queensland. Full back. Now with Murray. Liebling. Liebling. a lot older club but they've done pretty well just the same yes and they've been in the four of the last five grand finals the only winning uh, problem that they've had of course has been the bruised ribs of international centre gene miles the state block forward bob linda mick one of the most exciting prospects in this state at the moment he's resuming after a back injury and no doubt he'll be a welcome addition to the ranks of southern suburbs today 
OK, here's South coming from the northern end of the ground. The kick-off by Meninga, deep down into Winter Manly territory. It'll be taken back there by Brian Walsh, dropped it back behind him. Walsh up into the field of play. Walsh normally, well, he's played lock forward, he's played 5 eight, he's played everything but front row. It is Eddie Muller. Green works the blind side to Lewis. Lewis got away beautifully over there, cutting through as Warren Green. Green up over the halfway, pulled down to the tackle by Peter Jackson. And a dummy half, did all the score. And eight and a half minutes of the grand final gone by. Meninga gets it away to Belcher. Belcher up over the quarter line, cuts back inside. He's still going. He's going for that line, pulled down about a metre short of it. Double movement. And that's a good decision from the referee. Wynnum will do that all afternoon. Peter Dawes to Lewis on the blind side. Lewis holds it up. Now he accelerates. Here he goes. Back inside to Ian French. He's got some toe, this fellow. He's over the quarter line. He's going for the line. Jackson out after him. Gets it to Green. And there's the first try of the match. Warren Green in for the try. After 10 minutes of play, Winner Manley score the first points of 4-0. Oh, beautiful work from Wally Lewis. The magic of the man. Watch him. Here he goes. He moves with the ball and they just stand and watch him. He ran past Callaway like Callaway was a silent cop. Involved in the tackle, Gene Miles. Big Gino up over halfway, still going. Oh, it's picked up beautifully this time by Green. Green back inside to David Green and David Green will score underneath the post. Beautifully picked up there by Mel Green, the second rower. David Green dummy half. Lewis. Miles. Miles, over to French, this is trouble, over the halfway, Terry Butler outside, Beavers has a go, now to Butler, Butler's on his own, he cuts back inside, he's looking for support, French is back onto his feet, French is going to score in the corner. Still haven't got David Green down as yet, now doors to Lewis, Lewis the long one, Brian Walsh into the back line, then away to Terry Butler, Butler back inside, this is Lewis, Lewis put away there to Miles, and Miles is in. Miles in for another one, and the procession continues. And they're racking up a cricket score. It's 28 to two. Else well, not doing too much. There's Wayne Bennett. Uh, I wonder what thoughts are running through his mind. Self-destruction or some sort of Harry Carey bill? Ball roll loose, and it was Green able to stand up and get the way then to Doors. Doors back inside to Lewis. Lewis crashing through. Lewis over underneath the post. Winner Manley hit the 40 points. But it's all over now, and that's it. Winner Manley convincing winners of the 1984 Grand Final. They've taken it out by 42 points to eight. He's ended up winning the, uh, or being in the Grand Final team. It's uh, well and truly won. Boy, oh boy, what a score. Wayne Bennett walking about there, Malma Nigger in the background, the South players absolutely stunned. The one thing they'd love to do would be away from there, but give them their due mick, they've stayed there. That's the grand final for 1984, disappointing from a crowd spectacle, although your winner supporter was beautiful. So the full-time score, we see Winner Manley defeating South by 42 points to eight. The 1984 Winner Manly Seagulls boasted international and state of origin players Wally Lewis, Gene Miles, Colin Scott, Greg Dowling, Gary Coyne, Ian and Brett French and Terry Butler. Many felt they were the best side in the world. Notably, New South Wales coach Ron Willey caused a stir when he said publicly that he felt that Winner Manly would defeat the Sydney Premier's Canterbury Bankstown. Following Wally Lewis's season to end all seasons in 1984, he would be awarded the Golden Boot Award winner for the best footballer in the world. Following their crushing loss in the 84 Grand Final, 1985 would be a year of redemption for the Magpies. Meanwhile, 85 would prove to be a year where another power in Brisbane Rugby League would begin to emerge. Brothers, following the signing of Ross Strudwick as coach and Joe Kilroy, would prove to be a worthy contender over the next three years. This season. Kilroy rated a great chance of being named in the second state of origin side, blew that chance when he arrived late for club training on Saturday night. With Kilroy axed and skipper Pat Shepherdson sidelined with injury, brothers slumped to a surprise defeat at the hands of Redcliffe yesterday afternoon. The match was watched by Queensland selector Bert Quinn, who almost certainly was there to check on Kilroy and Fullerton Smith. But Kilroy wasn't even at the ground. And I just went down the coast. Saturday night, couldn't be bothered. Could that get you into trouble with the club because they expected you to play reserve grade, didn't it? 
Well, I found out, yeah, I just got informed that we won't play here today and that was it. Kilroy has faced criticism in the past for his occasional lack of dedication to training, but recently he's been in scintillating form and has shown on his day he's unstoppable. How far he'll go now is surely up to him. Missing yesterday's game, do you think you've now missed your chance of playing for Queensland at all this year? Well, kiss it permanently, Pat. So you've given up all, all hopes of ever playing representative football again? When it comes to an origin series, yeah. Kilroy hopes to be able to sit down and heal the rift with Stradwick soon, but for the moment the 24-year-old is disillusioned. I don't think I've been taken serious, you know. So. Before we talked to brothers coach Ross Stradwick, and it would appear they've sorted things out. Strudwick's meeting with Kilroy were not the actions of a desperate man. All Struddy wanted to do was clear the air once and for all. After the two had spoke for about 30 minutes, it was smiles all round. This uh, concentrated attack as it comes across to Smith, housing it up out wide to McAlpine, further across to Jack Kilroy. And Kilroy decides to have a go for the corner, gets away and dives in the corner. He scored in the corner, Joy Jack Kilroy. Another excellent try at Brothers lead by saw it early and uh, Brothers were turning the ball back up inside and the forwards having no trouble handling the ball. But as soon as they get it out wide, they trouble rallies every time. Look at Stane running now. Look, rough forward right now. He's looking for the sword back inside. Kilroy's in there. There's Kilroy. Kilroy's racing away. He's got a kiss there. Back it comes again out forward. Back to Kilroy. And Kilroy's over his second try within about a minute. Sensational play for Brothers. And they go to the Across then to Zillman. Roach and this Grogan. Grogan makes that break over the halfway mark and away he goes again. He's got Kilroy with him. But look at Grogan's fly. And then Kilroy. Kilroy races away. And here's another try with three coming up to Joe Kilroy. And Brothers going to a lead of 20 points to nil. Today, Brothers exciting fullback Joey Kilroy. Joe, three tries from fullback. You must enjoy playing fullback more than uh, out in the wing. Well, I've got a little bit more room to move, David. I can pick where to run. Um, I can see where the gaps are going to happen. So I can place myself a little bit better, yeah, and get there. And of course, uh, not only three tries, but you also served the final pass for at least a couple of others. So you're backing up well and looking to offload as well. Yeah, a bit keen to win today, I think. Uh, we have a point to prove. Even though we're running second, a lot of people still think that we're lucky to be there. I think we've got the form for and against, the credentials, and now we're up even top, so I think. Yeah, no, yes, <laughs> very close. I think winner might have won today, today so uh, uh, you're still a little bit behind, but certainly your for and against looks good. You had a slow start yourself to the beginning of the season. You've completely settled down now to playing your best football. Yeah, like most clubs, you know, you go through your little stage, you go up and down, um, Brothers is no exception. Um, we are settled down there, we've got a formidable combination, we've got a, a keen combination, and most of all the guys have got the will to win. Great win today, Joe, and thanks a lot, congratulations. Thanks, led 12-10 at half time, and here's the try right from the kickoff in the opening seconds of play from Joey Kilroy, and uh, first game at fullback this uh, this season, with uh, Tim Dwyer being moved to the setters, and boy, the move certainly played off for, for coach uh, Ross Strudwick, running the length of the field, and a spectacular start. The Winfield State League between Wynnum Manley, the defending title holders, and Fast Brothers. Rod Morris, what's your selection for tonight? Well, I'm going for a Manley on form. I think they have the form on the board to be able to take this game tonight. They need to mount their attack, and this is Linda. Running back across the ruck and running hard. Bob Linda, a lovely pass out to Ian French. French trying to cut back infield away to Terry Butler. That's as good a try as you'll see. That could be the try to wrap up the Winfield State League final. And there's the hooter, it's all over. Congratulations to Winner Manley and their coach Des Morris on a superb win tonight. A tremendous example it was of rugby league from a great side. Superb attack and a defence who was able to keep brothers scoreless. 1985 would also see the emergence of two future rugby league legends. First, Alan Langer from Ipswich. Played for North uh, through yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, the early days, and uh, all I wanted to do was play first grade footy for North. And, then... and Trevor Gilmeister from Northern Suburbs. Bowling, and back this time for second round, Gilmister. Wrestling and very strong. Gilmister got over, he got the ball down. Yes, he got the ball down. Very well done by Gilmister, and it's 6 all. Great work from young Trevor Gilmister. He's shown that uh, already in this match that he's a fine uh, defensive player and we saw his uh, determination there to score that try. After years of domination, Queensland would finally be defeated in the State of Origin Series for the first time in 1985.
Southwood power through the second half of the season to take out the minor premiership. Meanwhile, the champion winner Manly Seagulls would take on Valleys in the knockout semi-final. The winner Manly line, Panthers there. Out it comes to Ricks. A little kick and following through over the top. Look at Grant Ricks flying through. He gets the ball first. He scored for Valley. Well done, Ricks. Winner Manly leading by 16 points, by 18 points to six. Well, in saying that, it's good to see Tim Miles back. It's also good to see this fellow back. Needed to be the... Uh, the man is going to follow Wally Lewis's footsteps when he retires. Wally Lewis would lead a second half fight back to get the Seagulls through to the preliminary final. South's leading by 10 points to 8. They're trying to seal this game now as Muller comes across the front and gives it to Maninka. Maninka leaks taken from under him. Has broken. South would eke out a late victory against Brothers to get through to the grand final. The next week in the preliminary final, Winner Manly would defeat Brothers in a Brisbane Rugby League Classic. Brothers would be up early before the superstars of Wynnum would lead them home on their way to the grand final against Souths, a rematch of 84. Near Capacity Gate, about 35,000 people, a very warm, fairly still afternoon. We'd think the temperature to be about 25 or 26 degrees. Thanks, Arthur. We've got a replay here of last year's grand final, of course, and that was when Winner Manly thrashed South 42 points to 8. We've got a replay of last year's grand final, 42-8, Winner Manly won it. Uh, is this side a better side that you got this year than the one last year? It's a better team, David. Have you learned anything from last year, and what in particular have you learned from that one match? Oh, yeah, I learned quite a few things. Uh, I suppose that the most important thing I learned is that you have to have players that uh, maybe not as flashy as some other players, but they play with a fair bit of determination and courage for the 80 minutes. Thanks, Wayne, and good luck today. Thanks, David. And there we are, a sign there saying farewell and best of luck to Mal Meninga. And of course, Mal Meninga has signed with the Canberra Raiders for next season, and this will be the last time he plays for South here at the Lang Park uh, Stadium. out from his own line. That look his pass across to the 5'8 French. There's Meninga. And starts to get going, Meninga. Look at Meninga tripping, getting over that part, over that area. Sends his pass, goes astray. Picked up by Wallace. And Wallace uh, has it for South still. Almost lost it for a moment. Also Meskel in there, the front row forward. Flips across from doors to Lewis. A longer pass out wide to Brett French in the centre. Gets away from Meninga. Gets around Meninga. Over the halfway mark. Brett French kicking ahead. And the chase is on. The bounce favouring Wood of Manly. Brett French gets it eventually, and almost there. Butler, how close did Butler go to plucking it out of the air? But French picking it up eventually. The bounce favouring Wynnum Manley. The luck of the game, it's a penalty to Wynnum Manley, being held down by South. All the scores, he's got a 64% record this season, and there it goes. The flags are up, and it's 2 all after close to 14 minutes of play. Eddie Muller, the hookers there to distribute. French, Tronk, the second row forward. Peter Jackson in the centres. And found the gap there uh, between uh, Dowling and Nellis. Now the player up there. And a good run from Peter Jackson. Good run indeed. Winner Manly defence uh, held off there. It's a penalty too against David Green. And Craig Perugia, I think it was, Arthur, Perugia. who was playing back at fullback with Colin Scott getting attention on the sideline. Let's have a look at you. That, gee, that's a great tackle there from Perugia. Very even match so far. Yeah, nothing in it. French kick, there it goes. And it's there. 
So the Magpies hit the front again, leading by four points to two. Muller. And switch back to Jackson on that blind side. Peter Jackson tries to get it. Yes, he does get his pass away to the fullback out there. Fullback uh, gets his play. Yes, he broke away from that tackle, uh, Belcher. Belcher did very well, and he was stopped several times, it seemed. But now, with great determination and strength, he's 30 metres out to win a manly line. Cullen's pass. Out to French. French sends it on to Elias. Elias starting to move now. Running strong. Look at John Elias. Over the quarter line. The pass comes back inside now to Norm Carr. Gets up off the ground. Carr, can he keep going? And he got the ball down. Norm Carr. Yes, he did. It's a try to Norm Carr. And the Magpies lead by eight points to two. A great try from South. It first came from a great break down that right-hand side with Belcher chiming in beautifully to go a long way downfield. Winner Mandy had never recovered. First time in the match. Starting to look really good. Here comes Coyne. Coyne sending it back now. On to Adam. Adam's charging through. He's got the ball down. Starting in the tackle, can't get it down. Yes, right. he's got the ball down. Adams has scored for Winner Manley, and the first try has been scored by the Seagulls. Souths are leading by 10 points to six. Winner Manley loose head and feed should win it. Brett French getting attention against the head. Souths have got the ball, and that now, should be the ball game. Yes, it should be the grand final to Souths now. 22 metres out their own line, in possession. Up there is uh, Chris Fielands in the dummy half position. Chris uh, having his last game, and wouldn't he love to go out with the, the grand final? There's the countdown now. Chris Fielands certainly would wait. And Souths have sunk the Seagulls. The Magpies Souths have really shot down the Seagulls. Yep, and, and look at the elation. There it is, I think. Souths really wanted to win that one. They tried so hard over so many years, haven't been able to do it. They wanted it more than win a man today. They played some of the best football, finals football, some of the most controlled final football that we've seen here for a long time. Defence was magnificent. Win a man, he threw everything at them, but it was the defence around the forward pack. Norm Carr and brilliant cover defence. Look at Wayne Bennett. Congratulations, Wayne. And they haven't missed the opportunity. Yesterday, the club was in all four grand finals at Lang Park and took away three premierships. The only team that missed out was the reserve grade, but their disappointment was lost in the joy of the first grade's hard-fought 10-8 win over Winner Manly. Last night it seemed that every Magpie supporter in the city had descended on the clubhouse at Davies Park. The supporters had a special place in their hearts for big centre Mel Meninga, who played his last game for the club before joining the Canberra Raiders next season. And today, the celebrations continued unabated. First port of call was the Alliance Hotel, which is owned by the family of Magpie prop Mark Meskell. But perhaps the man who had most reason to be happy was coach Wayne Bennett, resplendent in winter manly hat. Bennett had been coach of two grand final sides before yesterday, and both had suffered hidings. Well, Wayne, you've known the disappointment of defeat. Does this make up for it? Yeah, it certainly does, John. There's uh, no comparison, believe me. Following the 85 grand final win, the South team would be decimated with the loss of Mal Meninga and Gary Belcher to the Canberra Raiders. The very next year, Senator Peter Jackson would head south also. Coach Wayne Bennett was also appointed coaching director of the QRL and the State of Origin coach. It was tough. I never wanted to leave. I never wanted to play for South. I wanted to play for South in first grade and I did that. And then I wanted to play representative football and I couldn't do it from here. It was just so difficult to finally realise that I had to leave. You still weren't considered up there in the top echelon of players unless you played Sydney. I went down there and um, I, can, I can rest assured that the standard wasn't that much higher. Money. 1986 would see Winner Manley back at the top of the ladder, with Wally Lewis appointed captain coach for the first time. A premiership winner and inspiration to a team which before last year's shock grand final loss to South had swept all before them. But Lewis is not content. Unlikely as it sounds, there's more to be gleaned from this great game. 1986 would also see the introduction of a new team into the Brisbane Rugby League, the Ipswich Jets. Two try-saving tackles, he made three or four 50-metre runs. Langer, as always, was uh, solid. Cliff Sin uh, and uh, Gordon Lankton. Uh, in the Wynnum side, uh, the man we mentioned, Ian French, uh, well, he forced his way into the state side, of course. Bobby Lindner, I didn't think there was much between them on the day. And uh, Wally Lewis was outstanding. He was, he was to my mind, uh, easily the, the man of the match. He was in everything, Lewis. Now, Bernie, a lot of talk about what happened after the game with jostling of Lewis and uh, there's been all sorts of allegations in the paper. What were your impressions of it? Well, to be honest, Pat, uh, of the, the press up there, none of us were aware the incident had occurred until uh, we were in the dressing rooms afterwards because they had a record crowd of more than 7,000 up there, the biggest crowd since World War II, some of the old hardheads uh, at Ipswich say. 
Uh, and I thought that um, considering they, they have had crowd problems in recent seasons, that it was probably the best behaved big crowd I've ever seen at a game in Ipswich. But unfortunately, there was this incident as the players were leaving the field uh, involving Wally Lewis. And uh, I think it's a shame, uh, as a couple of people have already said during the week, that uh, uh, a couple of uh, irresponsibles can, can cruel a, a good day's football for so many, uh, so many people. But With me now is the Redcliffe halfback and skipper Mark Murray. Mark, Winnem were in dashing form here on Sunday. How do you think you might overcome that tonight? Yeah, I saw some of their uh, tries on the television and the very spectacular, spectacular tries, but uh, I don't think those sort of tries are scored in finals, so they shouldn't be a problem tonight. So you think this game might be played at a different tempo? Well, I think if you're going to be realistic and it's played in the true final tradition, then uh, I think you know, it'll be a very uh, close hard struggle for most of the game and uh, those sort of tries don't really come along. How's the winner manly captain Wally Lewis? Wally, will Winnem be playing this match a little bit tighter tonight than they did against Ipswich at the weekend? Yeah, a little bit, not too much. Obviously it's a final and you've got to uh, treat the game accordingly, plus it's night time and uh, you know, we'll have to keep the ball a little bit uh, shorter. Right. How do you go into this match mentally prepared knowing that your opposition are the fellows that you're going to need with you to, to beat New South Wales in a week's time? Well, it won't be any different, really. We're out there and uh, we're playing for $47,000 for the winner's cheque. So, uh, and I can tell you, Winner Manly Football Club needs that badly. So we're out to, to take the money home and also uh, have a little bit of the prestige of being uh, state league champions for the third year in a row. So, uh, you know, it's be hard playing against Blakes, I suppose. You'd be hoping there's no injuries for the interstate game. But, uh, you know, it's a game of football out there. And, uh, well, John we Barber, what's your selection? It will be, John. Uh, I think Winner. Uh, my heart says Redcliffe, obviously. But uh, I think Winner will just have a bit too much pace and skill out there. From dummy half goes Gene Miles, trying to crash his way over after his superb game here against Ipswich on Sunday. Dummy half is Lewis, he'll go through himself, he's over. He's the master of play like that, Wally Lewis. Last coming up for the Seagulls, Miles is the acting halfback, and he'll run himself from there and pops it super fast to Greg Dowling. Oh, great foot. Wally Lewis to Miles. Trying to crash his way through, super fast to Colin Scott, then another good one to Ian French, and away it goes to Brian Naylor. Oh, great football by Winner Manley, and Brian Naylor goes in to score. Oh, you won't see some better passes than those. Absolutely freakish passes by Winner Manley, and only great players can pull off football like that in big games. A thoroughly professional performance by Winner Manley, and for their stars, a great warm-up for the State of Origin next week. South Wales have created rugby league history by becoming the first team to make a clean sweep of the State of Origin series. Tonight. Yeah, the clean sweep in 86 was just an unbelievable feeling. It had never been done before. It's only been done a few times since. And for me, as captain, it was definitely one of the highlights, the highlights of my career. And 1986 would see another classic Origin series, with each margin only being six points or less. However, New South Wales would sweep the series for the first time. Welcome to everyone throughout Queensland and even New Guinea to the knockout semi-final between Brothers and Valleys. For the loser, it's try again next year, while the winner lives to fight another day. The Brethren, coached by Ross Strudwick and captained there by Trevor Bailey. The diehards, coached by Peter McWhirter and led out by Keith Neller. Let's have Bangles. Now they switch it back. Smith, Brogan, tap, tap away from Walker. Look for his winger, Klein. Back inside is Stain. Stain for the line. He's over. Yes, it's a try. First points to Brothers. Good stuff here. <laughs> Allen. Allen makes a break and he's over for a try for Valley. That makes it 6 all. The scores are all locked up. What a run from Gavin Allen. And what a game he's had. Gavin Allen, a sensational young player. The player of the season in Cairns last year. And first time in the match. There's Strudwick right in behind the, the uh, team. And he's having plenty to say. It's a wonder here that Eddie Ward hasn't also had plenty to say. Strudwick has come right around behind the uh, try line. And he is blasting his players in from behind there. Let's have a look at it from, from behind as Pierce cuts across the back of the run. This is the one that fires out to Rion Pierce. Look at the little step. That cut him away from uh, Greg Smith. And then Trevor Smith couldn't get to him either. Then he straightens up. He's done the hard work. But the awareness was still there from this young fellow. Looking around him. Brings it down. Puts it right under the post. Still plenty of pressure though on Michael Bird. And struggling yelling from in behind the post isn't helping. What a vital thing for Michael Bird to get 
Foot balance in front. And the flags are up. Alex Stone will lead. Eight points to six. There's Ross Bradley. He's creeping around from behind the post now. One of the officials going to have a couple of words to him. They're not impressed. You've got to stay back over there. Ross is saying, I didn't realise. During the aftermath of the dramatic moments of Strudwick striding the sideline, one of the classic moments in Brisbane Rugby League history would take place, with Smokin' Joe Kilroy at the centre of it. The score, eight points to six in favour of the diehards. They've come from behind, it was 6-0 at half-time. Gil, Kilroy, Kilroy breaks away from the tackle, cuts through, showing great pace, beats Griggs, sprinting down the touchline, looks inside, gets a pass to Gagan, Gagan hasn't got the pace, chasing in his better team, he hasn't got the pace, and he scores! Brothers would enter their first grand final since 1974 as heavy underdogs against the Wally Lewis-led Winnemanley Seagulls. The match would live up to all expectations. Welcome everyone to the climax of the Brisbane Rugby League season, the 1986 grand final between Winnemanley and Brothers. There's no doubt that Winnemanley are hot favourites, but David, will complacency be a problem for the Seagulls? Well, I doubt it very much. I think the fact that they lost uh, the 85 grand final when they were also red hot favourites to South, uh, that will really be something that will spur them on. They've been hurting for, uh, for 12 months, Winnemanley. Captain coach Wally Lewis, first year that he's been captain coach, and of course this should be the last game that these players will put together. Well, Warren, I'm sure the officials are delighted with the crowd here at Lang Park. Estimates uh, that the crowd wouldn't reach 20,000 have been proven wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the 1986 Grand Final of the Winfield Cup, the biggest day in the Brisbane Rugby League calendar. Nine teams have given their all in the search for Rugby League's ultimate prize. There's the brothers team coming out onto the field now and they look very serious. The Boos, captain coach of Winner Manly, captain of Australia, Wally Lewis. Looks fair dinkum, as does the remainder of the side. Peter Dawes running out there too. Have a look at that, the Winner Manly side. What a side it is. Probably the last time we'll see them together. Colin Scott at fullback. Scott Lewis and Scott Nichols on the wings. Naylor and Miles in the centres. Lewis at 5'8". Uh, at Dawes with the injury to his arm. Lining up once again, not 100% fit. Linda French Green. Jenna, Ferrugia and Dowling. What a football team it is, capable of beating any side in Australia, any club side in Australia. They'd be the equal of anything in Sydney, but they still got to produce it on the day. There's Wally Lewis. He realises the disappointment of last year. They were red-hot favourites last year too, when they came up against the Magpies, who had Mel Meninga, Belcher, Elias, and certainly there was plenty of pressure on them then. There's more pressure this year. Wally Lewis had a very angry look on his face as he came out, very determined Lewis. And there's the kickoff for the 1986 Rugby League Grand Final. Lewis putting it down into the end goal, Burns has to reach high to gather. Now running it up to meet the Wynnum defence. In they swarm, Jenner there with Perugia. Referee keeping a close eye on it. Dowling takes a mark, oh strong tackle from Carter. Dang, he goes into Dowling. Man appreciating it too, no mistakes inside their own territory, penalty. Cattle inside the five, the brothers back, Bill in particular coming up too quickly, should be able to hit this one over. It's at low but it's through the post, so first points on the board for Winner Manley, they lead 2-0 after seven minutes. Lindner, close to the ruck, got into that side again. And he's right too, the brothers have been uh, coming up very quickly, be interesting to see here whether Scotty has a shot for goal. 30 metres out, hits this one well, and two more points. Winham skip away to an early 4-0 lead. Greg Smith 
Cut out pass for Grogan in the gap. Comes to Lewis. Bounces away from him, but Lewis made the tackle. Bit of a spin out wide. Gill. Holds up the puck. Goes himself. Straight through. That's better. Gill. That's try to come in. And he looks at the score. Oh. Great drive from Peter Gill. We saw him have a terrific game last week. The support of the grass crazy. He's done the brothers. See? And there. Smith. Gill. Rogan again goes wide, tap, pops a beautiful pass for Moore. Moore heading for the try line. Desperate defence holds him one metre short. Should be six more. One pass to Dowling. Miles throws a little dummy. Back inside, beautifully handled by Linda. Back inside, the ball's gone loose. But it's play on, Dale and on. Play on to the referee. And it's straight between the posts, the flags are up, the score 6 all. midway through the second half, 20 minutes to go. There's Strudwick on the bench, looking concerned, he knows when a man are in that try scoring position. Lewis to French, French away from the tackle of Bomba, French for the line, slips it back inside, Lewis onto it, play on, Lewis for the line, Lewis stretches out, shot the tie! It's a title win at Manly, Wally Lewis reaching out over the line and takes that for the lead, 10 points to 6. Well, the Emperor's done it, I don't know how he did it, we'll have to see it on replay to see how he got that ball down. What a magnificent effort from Wally Lewis, a solo, he's been knocked down by one of his own players there. As they come in to congratulate him, took one right on the nose, but I don't think he's hurting too much at the moment because he's just put his team in front. And it took some pretty concerted uh, attack there from uh, Winterman. Look at the two of them work in tandem here. Wally Lewis, Ian French. Look at this fella run the football. Rushes out of one, look like he'd go all the way. Then a desperation pass in behind him. Lewis still in backup position. Look for support, said, no, I've got to drop myself. Stretches out through one, reaches out right on the try line, got it down. Yes, what a super effort from uh, Wally Lewis to get that one down. Lewis. And that's full time. Winner Manley have won the 1986 Grand Final by 14 points to 6. The Phoenix Brothers, what a performance from both sides, a fitting end to the season. Both teams have given it everything they possibly could. The class of Winner Manley finally winning out. He's the captain, the coach, he's also the uh, try scorer. He set up or scored the try that uh, puts Winner Manley in front. And of course, he dictated the whole play. Great effort from Lewis. <laughs>
and uh, I think you know this week's as good as any. You said uh, the other day at the press conference that this is not obviously not the way you would like to go on out when you were retired. It was uh, so supposed to be champagne corks. Yes, I'd like to have uh, scored half a dozen tries and kicked a few goals and then opened the champagne after the last <laughs> game, but yeah, that's not to be. Jets to get back. They're 15 metres out, played back quickly to Alan Langer, and away goes the little fella skirting through, and he's over the line. Can he get it down? He can. He deserves that try, Alan Langer. He's had a wow of a game, the little bloke. As much, much as he joked about and whatever, he always had the greatest respect and he'd listen. It was a top piece of thinking by Alan Langer. Alan Langer, dummies, get straight past David Gerrard. He's still running, looking for support on the outside. Langer would have a breakthrough season in 87, coming out of nowhere as a bolter for the Queensland Origin side. And within one year of that, be the Australian halfback. Lewis, he's away. Where's the support? He's got the pass back inside to Sinclair. Wally Lewis at his best. The Emperor of Lane Park on fire tonight. That's now 10-0 and up for conversion. That should make it well. Meanwhile, in the Winfield State League, Wynnum showed that they still had it, defeating Toowoomba convincingly in the semi and then handling Redcliffe with ease in the final. Queensland would end their three-year origin drought with a victory in 87, led by a side that was predominantly composed of players from the local Brisbane comp. Brothers' rise as a Brisbane's powerhouse was complete in 87 as they took out the minor premiership and prepared to battle Redcliffe for the grand final. Good afternoon everyone and welcome to League 87 and our live coverage this afternoon of the 1987 Winfield Cup Rugby League Grand Final between Minor Premier's Brothers and Redcliffe. And it's also good afternoon to David Wright. Good afternoon Bill and it's really with a touch of nostalgia we go into the Grand Final this afternoon because with the entry of a Brisbane team into the Sydney competition next year we won't really see the competition in its current format ever again. And what a chance for both these sides to go down in history. It's 1965 since Redcliffe last won a premiership and 68 since Brothers have. So plenty of incentive for both sides. First team out for the 1987 Grand Final, the minor premiers, Brothers. And uh, led out by their captain for this afternoon's match, Trevor Bailey and Hooker. There they are, led out by their little mascot, the Leprechaun, Brothers. Probably slight favourites to win this match. And as expected, a late change for the Dolphin outfit. And the changes come from the medium of Robin Thorne. Robin Thorne won't be playing. He will be wearing number uh, five, sitting on the bench. And there we just saw Brett Riles wearing 14. He takes his place in the sides. The 1987 Brisbane Winfield Cup Rugby League Grand Final. Redcliffe kicking off down to Brothers. That's Coyne. Throws the ball across to his supports. Smith will be taken down. Carter juggles, then takes them on. And slips his pass. Still going. Still going. Play to the try. He's got it. The first try of the match for Brothers when they open the door. What a oh, try. Man. What a smile from the captain. Beautiful pass from Steve Carter. Had a suspicion about being forward. Eddie Ward didn't think so. But Steve Carter took them on straight up the middle. Brothers hit back the blind side first up. Let's have a look at it. Beautiful pass. That was okay. Picked up beautifully by Bailey. Clearing kick. Coin again. Being safe all day. Comes up again. Beats. Doesn't beat Rose, but unloads. He's passed to Moore. Moore beats the player. Moore into open spaces. Up towards the quarter way. Pat beats Sandy's tackle. Benson. Guru. Across the gunner. What a try of the A try of the Joe shows his orange mouth guard. He's exhausted. He'd only just barely recovered from the last cover defending tackle. Had to juggle that one to put it away. Great build up once again. Brothers showing from broken play. There's the man who started it, young Mark Point. The value of Breezes depends very much. Uh, there's another pass from Tapia gone astray. Point! Point for the try line! A couple of bets will come across with the most crossing and Point will score! And Brothers, that's their third try! They leave now 12 points to nil. Well, you can just about put your glasses down, I think. That's inexcusable from Redcliffe. Another try from a mistake. But certainly that the uh, tackle was a heavy one. Redcliffe 
at 8 0, okay. Wasn't what, it, what they wanted at half time, but it was certainly better than this. 12 0. There it is to Pyre, trying to get the pass away. Crunch deep. Carter, what a hit. The ball goes loose. Picked up quickly by Brothers. Here it is, the ball bouncing around. Tony Ray it is. Look at him search straight for his winger. Always had it in mind to get out. Beautiful pass, little flick of the wrist. And Mark Coyne, he's a speedster. Dave Brown, he could have had a jet behind him. He wasn't going to catch this fellow. He scoots away. Neither was Keo. And Mark Coyne, the young speedster, puts it down for Brothers' third try. Sandy, little tip pick through. Plenty of chases. What's it going? Tony Ray to have the extras right in front. Up go the flag. Brothers at another mark of the coffin. With four minutes remaining now, just under five minutes. In fact, they lead 26 points to eight. There's a little leprechaun. He's been on their side today. Brothers player, sorry to his feet. There goes the hooter. And Brothers, the third winner of the 1987 Wingfield Cup Grand Final by 26 points to eight. And what a happy bunch they are. They're strutting. He's a happy man. All credit to brothers. They really fought on strongly. And I think the scoreline really shows their supremacy this season. And last night, Corbett Park rocked like it hasn't since 1968. It's the team in the blue and the white is the brothers. The team that's superior to all the others. When games are all played and the season no more. His brothers and friendly is dropping the score. The day after the night before, brothers join you no bounds. Although there were plenty of bruises and cuts, Gary Smith the worst with a broken arm and Greg Smith broken ribs. The 19-year drought had well and truly broken and Strudwick was the most emotional of all. The last 40 minutes was so hard, it was so long. Even though we were in front by three tries, you know, they had to score three times, the, uh, it was too long. It was the longest 40 minutes I've ever spent. In an outstanding team effort, Mercurial fullback Clinton Moore was the star, with some brilliant broken field running. If you have a look at last year's video, you can see, you know, see we weren't that confident getting, uh, so this year we were really thrilled there all the way. For 29-year-old halfback Greg Smith, this was his last grand final. Oh, no, Peter, I think I'll just watch. It'd be great to watch the, the uh, Brisbane side go in, the, in with the Sydney. Um, you know, I've, I've had enough. But for 20-year-old winger Mark Coyne, it was his first. Next year I'm off to uh, St George, so I'll be giving my best shot with the other fellas. And for brother's lucky charm, Tony Ray, it was his 18th consecutive grand final. It felt like all my career has built up to that game. I thought, thought about it all through yesterday and that. And just an unbelievable feat for real brothers. The Brisbane Rugby League would never be the same after 1987, due to the introduction of a Brisbane-based side into the New South Wales Rugby League competition. The New South Wales comp had larger sponsorship opportunities and clubs had sizeable amounts of money to lure the best players from the Brisbane comp. Now with a Brisbane based side entering the competition from down south, the majority of the 1987 Premiership winning brothers side would sign with St George. And Wally Lewis, Gene Miles, Greg Dowling, Colin Scott, Alan Langer, Joe Kilroy, Brett LeMann, Brian Niebling and Greg Kineskew amongst others would sign with the newly formed Brisbane Broncos. And a very good evening everyone, welcome to Lang Park for what is quite a, quite a sensational start to what is going to be quite a sensational season that's for sure. It's the first appearance of the Brisbane Broncos as they prepare for their assault on the Sydney Rugby League competition. Joining me tonight as he will be right throughout the season is David Fordham. Fordham nice to Valleys would be the pace setters in the BRL Comp in 88 and they would show this in the State League final against the Tigers. Peter Coyne leads the diehards onto Lang Park for the Winfield State League final. A very, very good crowd in to see this match this afternoon. Coyne looking for a runner, picks up Holmes. 
spinning it to Hegarty. Oh, and there's Egan into space. He'll run hard. He'll run up the line. Will he get there? Guy Gorey has. Oh, that's a strong run, Kelly Egan. McAlpine reversing. It goes to doubt to Patterson. And now McDonald. They lay off him. Inside to Harrison, and that's a try. He's done it. They did it on the final tackle. That's not good football from the diehards. Darrell Harrison in to score. It's 10 all. Oh, but top marks to McDonald. The try wasn't on, but he knew Harrison was coming like. Now, watch this. He calls. Watch it. McDonald's got a bit of a flick. I know you're there somewhere because he heard the call. Uh, Darren Smith, the best of the forwards, followed closely by Patterson. And uh, as we watch this slammer, and it looks pretty good. Oh, Ripper. An absolute pearler from Steve Haggerty. 26 to 10 now, the lead for the diehards. And there she goes. And in the... Ipswich snuck into the semi-finals for the first time and took on the highly favoured East Tigers. However, they would show that they were not there to just make up the numbers and were led admirably by prop Pat O'Doherty. No, not really, Andrew. We've, uh, you know, we've sort of been travelling along the same way for the last eight to ten weeks now, so we didn't feel there was you know, much need to change. Oh, much. Andrew, the, the main thing I stress them is um, just keep the mistakes to a minimum because I think that's what's going to decide the game. And how's their form been in the lead-up to this match? Oh, we've been a bit erratic, I suppose, and um, it looks like East will be favourites today, but I'm not that concerned because we've had a very good preparation this week. So, um, and um, Equal second I'm on the ladder, confident. but points for and against uh, relegated them into the knockout semi-final. It's Staines goes to dummy half. Who wants it? Muir. Anderson. Cook. Hastings gets his pass away to down to Mark McDonald, and East have done it. The practice switch. The first time they've got near the try line and the leading try scorer in the Brisbane competition, Mark McDonald's in the score. East lead four yeah. points to nil. And he'll be tackled only about eight metres out. Anderson over to Lusk, a little stab kick. Here comes Cook and that's a try. They've done it again, East. By golly, when they get close to the line, Ipswich can't hold them out and the big front row is showing shades of no. the line. Couple of big strong runs from the second row in the last couple of minutes. Parcel, well picked up by Spark. He's got it away to Robertson. It's a try. Ipswich are in. Ken Robertson's in to score. The Jets are back in business. East lead 10 points to four. And there's Darren Smith with Des Morris. Darren, of course, broke his draw in the match against Western Suburbs last week. 12 metres out from the Eastern Suburbs line. Let's see if Ipswich can finish off a move. It's rather strange. They needed support there. That was a good run from Doherty, but they, they seem to get here and they don't know how to finish it at all. Spark couldn't get his hands free to get the pass back to Ovens. Williams a dummy half. Now Ovens. Walters pushes away. Eckert, well, he tried to, but Eckert eventually held on to him. Now it's with Hunter. Carts. Out to Walters. Trying to get his hands free, he has. Gavin Payne's got it, back to Hunter. He's only got Cook to beat. It's back inside to Williams, and he's in. Ross Williams is in the score, it's an even ball game. 10 points apiece, 18 minutes remaining. Coming up, Nipswich are controlling the ball. Ovens for a field goal. It's over, Nipswich hit the front. Point, pointed out. Uh, Alan was that they won against the head all afternoon in truth. Tremendous, real good pushes. Best players, O'Doherty, Ovens, Robinson and Williams. And for uh, East, I thought that uh, Hastings was terrific. McIntyre, marvellous. And all in all, a real tough final. And O'Doherty is still going at the end. There's three seconds remaining. There won't be time to play the ball. That's full time. Ipswich keep going they've won the knockout semi-final east bower out it switched defeating east by 11 points to 10. Good afternoon, Chris Bombalus for Nines Wide World of Sports. Welcome to our coverage of the Winfield Cup Grand Final between the Diehards and Ipswich. 
Well, the scene down at Lang Park is electric. Supporters from both clubs are enjoying themselves. And uh, there's plenty of green and white from Ipswich. And, of course, the royal blue from the diehards. Well, the Jets have done a great job to get into their gra first grand final for many a year. The Ipswich Jets, the culmination of a three-year plan. They've done it the hard way, defeating Easts and Souths in the semi-finals. Coal miners are definitely the underdogs. That's the way the coach likes it. What up? Final, they have one last stumbling block if they're to be the premiers, and that's the boys in royal blue. The Valley Diehards, their first grand final appearance since 1979. A form slump mid-season forgotten, they gained a grand final berth the easy way with a convincing victory over Souths in the major semi-final. This has come on to Lane Park for the 1988 grand final. Well, the gladiator does, it's the same thing. Well, here they come now. Firstly, the little ball boy, and then there they are. Led on by Peter Coyne. And here they come, the Jets. Led out by Gavin Payne. There's Dean Ponning, who's starting in front of Andrew Walters, and he'll be one of the hitmen early, I'd say, Parker. I'm rather jealous. I wish I looked like him as we kick off. Evans, down to his opposite number and Brett Gord, and in comes Peter Shields. Paddy O'Doherty and Ben Olsen meet Shields, and they put him to ground. Holmes a dummy hut. Oh, Wolans has given Richard Boy some. And it's on Darren Wolans. There's not much of him, but he's the hit man for the Jets. And he's got Richard Boys after 33 seconds. Oh. And Walker's it's hold of Hunter got him a bit high. Now he wouldn't let him play. This would be a big plus if he could put this one over. The wind's blowing all over the place, as we told you earlier. So it would possibly be a bit of a miracle if he can get it over. He will see. How's it look? Pretty good. Real good. It's over a gem. Ipswich draw first blood. They lead by two points to nil. The grand final. You're watching it on nines. Wide world of sports. Ovens. Spark. Spark. Back to O'Doherty to Parcel. And he's just short of the line. And he was looking for support that should have been there. Now Ovens. Cards. Pass has gone to Walton. They've got a score. Dean Ponting. Dean Ponting in the score. Oh, great stuff. The Jets. Seen Kelly Higgins have the ball in the game yet, Mick. Oh, yes, there's space away goes Shields. Is he going to try and beat Payne? He does, he won't, he's in the touch. Oh, good run, very good run. So we see the Jets open up. Williams on the other. Oh, what happened there boys saw that he was going to be able to uh, to hit ovens as he received the ball because it was obvious from the play the ball that was coming there he took off from a good five meters back once the ball was then knocked forward uh, or knocked backwards boys stuck the arm out and collared ovens i'd be surprised if he's all that badly injured to be quite honest i think he'll be up in a check well david manson i think has ruled correctly if we have a look at the replay again the first hit on ovens is actually on his shoulder now what's this? I tell you what, he had to step out of the road or he was in trouble. Shoulder. And yes. then up after the shoulder. Yes, and I don't I think you're right, Andrew. Oh, they're attacking well today, it's Richard. This is the best they've attacked all year, Mick. We've seen a bit of them play. We haven't seen them put on this sort of stuff. O'Doherty runs into Walker. He's not settled yet, O'Doherty. He was stuck a ripper. Ovens. Ovens. Ponting. That is champagne football. It is beautiful. Just back up. He got in front of the wingers. Now he disappears there. There he goes, rolling, rolling over. But it, look at him. Beauty, he says, four points. Ten. 
that's what worries me. Ipswich not defending as well as hard. Don't coin, boys, coin. wanted it switch to win today just for the game but these guys really did go well and we'll listen to the brisbane broncos would win their first ever competition by winning the 1989 panasonic cup composed of a team primarily made of players who learnt their trade in the local brisbane rugby league competition he's got the run around he's leaked up out wide and further out wide is tony curry and further on goes the Scrum has gone against the feed. The Broncos come up with it. Here's Lewis. 
Oh, that was a costly loss for the Steelers as the Broncos three and wide. Jackson out to Duffy. Duffy's in the clear. Here's Jackson. Jackson's in for try number two for the Broncos. It really was immaculate football. Ladies and gentlemen, the Brisbane Broncos, a truly great football team. Would you congratulate them on winning the 1989 Panasonic Cup? Lewis leading his great side. And Mr. Ken Arthurson is there to congratulate the players. 1989 Panasonic Cup champions, the Brisbane Broncos. Winners can smile, says Wally Lewis. 1989 and the BRL would also see the emergence of two future State of Origin champions for Queensland, Robbie O'Davis and Darren Smith for the East Tigers. Your man of the match today between Easts and Norths. The young fella, 17-year-old Robbie O'Davis. Rob from Winfield, great job out there today. This first grade's easy, isn't it? Oh, I wouldn't say easy. <laughs> it's a bit of a challenge, but I'm giving my best shot and what happens out there, I have full control over it. <laughs> Mate, when you got the call from East, I know you were playing with Valleys up in Toowoomba. It must have been uh, a sensational feeling when they decided to bring you to Brisbane. Yeah, oh, it was a bit of a change. Um, I felt I was prepared for it. And I come down here as a junior player, just in the Colts grade, and um, everything sort of just happened so quickly. I went from nothing in Toowoomba to A grade in a matter of months, and now I've had that bit of a chapter in Sydney, so what comes of it next, I hope it's all good news anyway. Well, congratulations again, Winfield Man of the Match, Robbie O'Davis. Okay, thanks very much, and thank you to Winfield. Yeah, well done, and uh, interesting to see that the talent scouts in Sydney have already uh, painted Rob O'Davis. The BRL Grand Final of 89 would be a rematch of the previous year with Valleys taking on Ipswich. Well, it wasn't expecting it wasn't for him. So now Hegarty giving it to Coin. Over the top to Buckley. He's for the corner. He's home for your team money, Shane Buckley. There's the first try of the match. Proceed. Oh, and here's trouble. Murray Fechner coming across his parcel. He kicks ahead for Daunt. Ovens and Daunt and what ups. Daunt will be there first. Will they? Wait, matter. Murray Fechner will, and that's a try. What a beauty. Daunt didn't get the bounce. Quick play the ball. It goes away now through Parcel and Cards. There's a chance now. Sam Smith will score. It's which are in. They've finally cracked the defence. Well, could this be the turning point of the game? Sam Smith in the corner. Valleys had held on for nine and a half minutes in the second half so far. And they still... Graham Albert stands his ground. He should be in there. Now Coyne, what's on? Billy Holmes is what's on. And here's Hegarty in support. Inside the Hegarty. Murray Fechner's on mark. He'll be under the post. Valleys have done it. Billy Holmes the man. Billy Holmes has created havoc. Murray Fechner supports, and is that the last nail? 14 points to four, Valleys lead, but gaps opening up all over the park. And there it is, full time, and Valleys have won the 1989 Rugby League Grand Final. They defeated Ipswich by 28 points to four. Well, I'm in a different world now, and, and I miss this world because it's it was what it was about, it was about, about a club. Brisbane Rugby League in the 80s. Immortal players. State of origin dominance. Legendary characters. Challenging the supremacy of the Sydney competition. International Rugby League world domination. The greatest league the world never knew.